What does our ummah need from us today? What does the Muslim ummah need from the believers around the world who are almost 2 billion in number? And more specifically, at this time of the year, what does our ummah need from us during the blessed month of Ramadan? Of course, the answer to this question could take us hours and a lot of commentary, a lot of advice, a lot of practicality, a lot of insights and interpretations and understandings and perspectives. But in short, if we were to take just three principles, and all of these are found in just one surah, Surah Muhammad, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who consistently follow the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three principles that if we were to follow would benefit the rest of the world and of course would benefit the ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. The first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tansuru allaha yansurukum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. O you who believe, if you are to give victory or aid or support to Allah, meaning to the religion of Allah, to Islam, to the revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yansurukum will give you victory and aid and support in his own way. And he will keep you firm, steadfast as well. Now, there are a number of reflections. The first that we take from this is an emphasis. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Every time you come across this, more than 80 times I believe in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. O you who believe, pay closer attention and that's a sign of your faith. That when you recite or hear. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. O you who believe, O believers, you pay closer attention. There's an emphasis here on something you must do or something you must avoid. If you give aid, support to the religion of Allah, in Allah, and of course here, this includes everything of revelation, the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The emphasis here is on what? In Allah is an action. It's not a claim. If you say, I am a Muslim, that is not enough to say that you are aiding the truth. If you say, I believe, and then you don't act upon it. That's not enough to say you are aiding the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another reflection is oftentimes some Muslims are thinking and wondering, how will the victory of Allah come? How will I be supported? In what form? In what way? And rather than spending so much time thinking about how, remember, وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To Allah belongs the soldiers of the heavens and the earth. He has his own ways of decreeing what he decrees. Your role is not to reflect on how, but to take action. In Tansurullah, give victory to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will see the results as Allah decides, when He decides, is based on uh, His wisdom, meaning when it is decreed for something to happen. Another reflection is that, no doubt our ummah today, of two billion, we have a larger number of Muslims in the world today than ever in history. And there are advancements today in technology, in discoveries and various disciplines and sciences. So the Muslim world today has a lot more in terms of materialism and technology than the entirety of the past generations of Muslims. And yet, the Muslim world today, if we were to be very realistic and to look at the situation in many countries, but not necessarily all, there's a lot of oppression and injustice against Muslims. And there's a lot of weakness in different places. Weakness of some forms, in some pockets, in some areas. And the reality is it's not about the technological advancements or how much material wealth you have. It's that more of the previous generations were focused on aiding the victory, or rather aiding the uh, truth and receiving victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that. And of course the disclaimer here is that it does not mean that the entirety of the Muslim world today is not righteous, and it does not mean that all the Muslims of the past were righteous either. Right? We recognize that there's this and there's that throughout history and in the modern times. In addition to this, when people talk about specific figures or references to Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi or Muhammad al-Fatih, or you go all the way back to the time of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een as well, and you look at what some of them used to do in terms of their lifestyles, their piety, their practice in public and in private. And you recognize that all of these individuals had with them and around them and surrounding them and the years before and the months before support 
And that support was from an environment of people who are also aiding the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we are not referencing all of the other names and all of the factors that led to that moment in which something good happened. But they were not just concerned with how is the Muslim world doing today. They were concerned with am I being righteous as well. The concept of spreading goodness in the world for the Muslim generally begins with your internal state, your heart, your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you sit down and criticize the political happenings around the world and what's happening in different countries, the first you look to yourself and you say, I am part of either the solution or the problem. You are either aiding the religion of Allah by being a practicing Muslim or you are supporting the downfall of the ummah. And while that sounds very black and white and of course the spectrum is wide in between, we have to recognize our role in the state of the world today. That if we were connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the world would benefit from our piety. Non-Muslims would benefit from Muslims practicing Islam. The issues that we see around us of injustices and problems in this country and around the world are issues that would be solved by and resolved by many Muslims as well. Not necessarily in their entirety, but we would be part of the solution rather than being part of the problem. Number five, another reflection on this is that this ayah can be used to respond to individuals who mistakenly say or think Allah's religion does not need to be defended or aided. As though they assume, here's the clarification, as though they assume that the religion is in need or that Allah's religion and revelation is in need. When in fact, we are the ones who are in need. Allah is al-ghani, self-sufficient. We are in need of supporting the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of living by it, of practicing it, of understanding it, in order to benefit ourselves and the world around us, in this life and in the next life. And of course, this starts at home. In the month of Ramadan, we're emphasizing taqwa more than anything else through all acts of worship and throughout the year to give support and victory to the religion of Allah is for you to practice Islam consistently, for you to pray your five prayers consistently, never missing a prayer. That's not a thing in your mind. Why? Because you know its role in this world. You know you were created for it. To give victory to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you are not just acting like someone of good character in public with strangers, but rather behind closed doors with your family, with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, that you are also righteous, that you are merciful, that you protect the right, you're not violating the rights, that you're a source of paradise to them, not a source of oppression. To give victory to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to only consume what is permissible, to make sure that your income is permissible. What you're taking in is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're refraining from what is prohibited and you are honest with Allah in all situations. Aiding Islam is also for you to pray on time. Aiding Islam is for you to fast Ramadan, to fulfill your obligations because you recognize that all of that, the Akhirah, is greater than anything of this world in terms of worldly priorities, desires, or societal pressures. Aiding Islam is to speak the truth in all situations. Even if you are bearing witness against yourself or your family or your parents, that you are standing with truth and with justice regardless of the conflict or situation. Aiding Islam is to also stay strong and to be brave and to be courageous when there are a lot of anti-Islamic sentiments in society or the world or when Islamophobia starts to spread or impact society at a structural level in terms of policy making, oppressing Muslims in different countries in terms of religious freedom you are becoming stronger and more brave and more courageous during such times and in a way you are aiding Islam. Aiding Islam is also to be brave and steadfast in appearing as a Muslim in public and not being embarrassed by it. In practicing Islam in public and not being embarrassed by it. In praying whenever you have to pray regardless of who is watching. Because at the end of the day you recognize the role of the Muslim in this world and their connection to the one who created this world and what's waiting for you in the next life as well. Aiding Islam is to stand with those who are being oppressed, with your brothers and your sisters, not shying away from defending those who are being oppressed in any form. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who give victory and support and assistance and aid to his religion so that we are benefiting and the ummah and the world are benefiting as well. Allahumma ameen. Again, ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. O believers, in Tansurullah Yansurkum, wa yuthabbit akhdamakum. 
If you give victory to the religion of Allah, if you give support to the religion of Allah, Allah will give you support and He will keep you firm. And at the end of it, it's not just that you're receiving support for yourself or the entirety of the ummah, you are being given steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. Allahumma ameen. The second thing our ummah is in need of, especially during these times and especially in Ramadan that we can focus on from this surah, from Surah Muhammad, is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who strive for guidance, Allah will give them guidance and increase them and grant them God consciousness. He'll give them God consciousness. He'll give them mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amongst the reflections from this principle, it's number one that good from the Islamic paradigm follows good. Khayr follows khayr. That you seek guidance. You took one step towards Allah, and Allah took many towards you, as the Prophet ﷺ informs us. You turn to Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to you with much more than what you gave. You take one step towards Him, and you start repenting, you will find an abundance of khayr in terms of acts of worship, the doors opening for you. And it's important for us to consider that oftentimes one of the traps of the devil for old and for young individuals is to think, I'm too guilty. I'm too ashamed. I'm not good enough. Who am I to ask Allah? A young man, college student, came up a few days ago out of state. And he said, I just, I'm struggling so much to, to do tawbah, to repent. Because I just feel so bad. I feel so guilty and ashamed. Like, how dare I ask Allah for forgiveness when I've asked for forgiveness so many times? This is a trap of shaitan. It's not a part of Islam to ever lose hope. Hopelessness is not a part of Islam. Islam actually supports hope in all situations. Your heart is beating, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who told you, turn to me, I will respond to you. Seek forgiveness, I will forgive you. In the hadith Qudsi, Ya ibn Adam, O children of Adam, inna kama da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana mink wa la ubali. As long as you call upon me and have hope in me, I will forgive you. And I do not mind, meaning I want to forgive you. Allah wants to forgive you. No matter how many sins you've committed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive you. But turn to him sincerely and don't give up. The devil would rather you lose hope and you gain nothing once you become hopeless. And Allah would rather you turn to him even if it takes you a thousand attempts to change your life. It's better than giving up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent. In addition to this, you look at the order of the words in this ayah, The first thing that's mentioned is those who are seeking that guidance. The effort starts with you. You are turning towards Allah. In the month of Ramadan, so many people around the world, so many Muslims are noticing their increase in Iman. And they think it's only because it's Ramadan. They might think it's because everyone else is fasting. It's because you put in effort. You sought mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us and protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are constantly putting in that effort throughout the year, not just in the month of Ramadan. You seek guidance from Allah. Allah will give you what you're looking for. But be sincere and consistent and hold on to it. Don't give up on your efforts, even if it requires you to displease other people who are making fun of you or judging you for becoming a more practicing Muslim. Do not let that hold you back. And a third reflection on this ayah. Push yourself to overcome your nafs and make sure that you start every single day with some form of dhikr, remembrance of Allah. When you first wake up, there are certain supplications you should say. There are athkaru sabah, the morning supplications. There are athkaru masa, evening supplications. There are athkaru nom, supplications right before you sleep. Start your day and end your day with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find that this aids you in overcoming misguidance and overcoming deviation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent. The objective of fasting, la'allakum tattaqun. So you may gain taqwa. You're going to be putting in effort fasting Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. And naturally, a byproduct of that is you will see that blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your faith, in your iman, in your spirituality, in your practice. And we know that there are around, again, 2 billion Muslims in the world, again, identify with Islam. And so there's the claim here that you are Muslim, and then there's the practice here. And there's a gap in between for many people. And what we hope is throughout our lives, that gap between you saying, I believe and I know, I know what's right and wrong, I know what's halal and haram, 
and your practice, we hope that the gap in between is decreasing over time, that you never give up on decreasing that gap, that everything you know of right and wrong, you are practicing as well. And if there's a gap in between in which you are not practicing, you know salah is obligatory, you are not praying your five prayers, even though you know Allah will question you about it, and it's one of your shields on the day of judgment amongst many other deeds, that you are doing all that you can throughout life, year after year, to improve. You're not procrastinating for a future year or a future time. You're taking advantage of the current moment in addition to this. We are reminded that there are a number of Muslims who may be struggling in different forms. Our hope and our objective is to support one another, help one another, advise one another. If you can silence your phones, Jazakum khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Those who believe, ladina amanu wa aminu salihat, combine those who believe and do righteous actions, and then in Surah Al Asr, wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr, they're calling towards truth and they're calling towards perseverance. As Muslim brothers and sisters, and as family members and friends and community members, we all have a role to play in supporting and helping other Muslims. When you see other Muslims struggling, sinning, committing major sins and transgressions, your role is not to say, may Allah condem condemn you, may this person be punished, this person is horrible. Make dua that they are guided. Give them advice. Find a way to better the situation. Rather than in the moment feeling good about yourself because you're not doing what they're doing, you're not as bad as this person you're looking at in your perspective, and you know putting them down and having pride and arrogance, pray for them, advise them. Allah concealed your shortcomings and anything good you have. It's not because of you, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent and help us to help one another. Allahumma ameen. A very useful question to ask is, just as a reflection point, what would the world look like if all two billion Muslims practice Islam today? What would the world look like, not just the ummah? What would the world look like today, in this year, if every Muslim in the world actually practiced Islam in its entirety? in terms of character, in terms of interactions, in terms of the rulings, in terms of the rituals, what would happen to the world around us? What would happen to our societies? There's no doubt we can assume that society would be a much more peaceful place, that there would be more justice in the world because Muslims are practicing Islam, advocating for justice wherever they are. And they have now blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and support in tansurullah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum that people would be more upright, that more people would embrace Islam, that more people would be upon morality, that society would have less moral decay. That we would assume. We would assume that in such a world, there would be an impact on mental health as well, that there would be more optimism in society, more trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a greater understanding of our purpose in this world, why we are here, why we go through hardships, and how to benefit others who are struggling as well. In fact, some of the very first people in history who started focusing on mental health were Muslims. And in fact, the people that they were helping were rejected by uh, Christian states and Christian uh, regions. And so we need to think about our role in practicing Islam and what it does for us mentally, as well as the resilience and the optimism and the strength and the relief that you are sharing with other people in your life, Muslims and non-Muslims. In addition to this, we would assume that if Muslims were more practicing of Islam, we would be more united. We would not be divided. And when there are divisions, these divisions would not cause enmity in our hearts. It would not cause pride between people. Divisions would not be based on worldly metrics or wealth or your ethnicity or the color of your skin or the language you speak. Because what unites us is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in the Quran, we believe in the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. So we need to look at what we claim and what we believe and what we are practicing every day of our lives. Whether you are observed by Muslims or non-Muslims or you are alone in private, make sure you are consistent in bridging that gap. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent. Allahumma ameen. Again, the second principle. وَالَّذِينَ هَتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدًا وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ Those who put in effort, those who seek and strive for guidance. You did your part. And you keep working hard on your journey towards Allah, Allah will give you that guidance and He will give you God consciousness. Number three and the last point here 
is the principle of connecting to the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَخْفَالُهَا Do they not reflect upon the Quran? Tadabbur here is to reflect upon the Quran. Or are there locks, shackles, chains upon their hearts? And this is and could be a very frightening ayah for us. Because we know our worldview, what we believe, the way we see the world, the way you understand morality, the way you engage with society, the way you are working towards the akhirah, your job, your studies, your family, everything is shaped by your belief system, your worldview. And it is through the lens of the Qur'an. But what happens if there is a shackle upon your heart? And we take from this that the believer is the one who studies the Qur'an and reflects upon it regularly. Why? You're taking your instruction from the Qur'an. What it is you're supposed to be doing. What you're supposed to be avoiding. Your keys to success and salvation. How to live your life righteously. How to interact with other people. How to deal with those who abuse you. And so on and so forth. It is the very healing the shifa that we are looking for at all times. Shifa'un lima fi sudur. It is a healing for what is in the hearts. In addition to this, another reflection is that it's being described in a way like something with a lock on it. Imagine, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, imagine a door with a lock on it. You cannot access what's behind it unless you unlock this shackle or this chain or this lock. And you're preventing yourself from something great. You're preventing yourself from something unimaginable if you are not allowing yourself to unlock that chain or have your heart unlocked in some way. We think about the many people around the world who claim they want to believe in God but refuse every sign and every evidence regardless of the field, regardless of the type of sign, whether it's in science or philosophy or basic logic or the fitra, psychology and history and everything else of proofs. There were people who saw these signs and miracles in front of their eyes during the times of the prophets and messengers and they rejected them so we are not surprised some people today will still reject the final miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have access to the Quran and yet when there's a shackle upon one's heart it might not be on or off black or white it's there or not for the believer you could have a type of blockage on your heart a type of uh, obstacle that prevents you from fully accepting the signs around you. And that's something we should reflect on. As we get close to the month of Ramadan and we practice today as though Ramadan has started and we take advantage and we show gratitude to Allah, at the end of the day, you want your heart to be purified. The hardening of the heart is a very dangerous thing because if it's partially hardened, you don't know what it could lead to later on. And interestingly, the very thing that unlocks your heart is reflecting upon the Qur'an studying it, embracing it, living by it, teaching it to your family, to your children, asking frequently, what is it that I can do to live by the Qur'an? It is the very cure that we need. It is a healing for every illness, a guidance for every misguidance. It is the thing that corrects all that is deviated. And it is our key to success and salvation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the people of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Verily, the believers are those who, when the name of Allah is mentioned, their hearts are moved. And when the Qur'an is recited upon them, to them, around them, zadatum imana, their iman increases. And they put their trust in their Lord. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimullah, one of the earliest of scholars from the first generations, reported from another scholar, he said, an example based on this ayah is like a man who is about to commit a sin. And then someone said to him, ittaqillah, have taqwa of Allah, be caught conscious, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it moved his heart, and he abandoned the sin. We are living in a times in which many people are told, fear Allah, be God conscious, be careful, that's haram, don't do that. Regardless of the way that they were advised, no matter what kind of advice they are given in the most polite, loving, humble, private manner possible. Instantly, their kibir comes out, and they say, who are you to advise me? The Prophet ﷺ informed us what is paraphrased as 
Amongst the worst types of people is the man who is told, fear Allah, and his response is, you fear Allah. A sign of arrogance is that you are not receptive to nasiha. That when your flaws are pointed out, your ego comes out. And that's exactly what the devil did. May Allah protect us. Adam السلام, and Hawa reprimanded by Allah. Their first reaction, Rabbana adhalamna anfusana. We have wronged ourselves. Admit when you are wrong. Why? At the end of the day, what's at stake is not your reputation. What's at stake is not how that person perceives you. We all have flaws. What's at stake is your akhirah, your afterlife. And that's why we should generally love and pray for the people who advise us. When others won't advise, when others think, we have to be careful. Walk on eggshells. Don't advise her. Don't advise him. It might mess up the relationship or the friendship, but wallahi, if you are a true friend and a true brother and a true sister and you care about one another's akhirah, then you would advise that person so they are not regretting it in the next life and wondering, why did nobody advise me? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, who said, may Allah have mercy on the one who shows me my flaws. Why? Because at the end of the day, you're hoping, you're improving. And if nobody tells you you're doing something wrong and advising you, and your heart is not moved by that, how will you improve? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us receptive to nasiha wherever we are. The believer is the one whose heart is moved by the remembrance of Allah or the reference to Allah. And if you feel like you're not at that place, ask yourself, what am I listening to every day? What are the things that you're watching, consuming? Are you listening to Quran frequently? Are you reflecting on the names of Allah? Are you making dua and dhikr? Are you the type of person who when the remembrance of Allah is mentioned, the Quran is mentioned, you conform your desires to the revelation? Or are you doing the opposite? You want to do something so you conform revelation and Islam to your desires. May Allah protect us all. We change ourselves in the process of seeking taqwa, of getting closer to Allah, and we recognize one of the greatest ways to be protected in our hearts and to preserve your akhirah. So stay connected to the Quran day and night. We have so many resources today, but stay connected to the Quran. It will help you in countless ways. It will help your family, your community, and other people as well. It gives you a light by which you are able to walk through society and enlighten others as well and be protected from darkness. And in addition to this, not just listening to the Quran and studying the Quran, but implementing what you are reciting, which also reminds us, if you ever recite the Quran and someone else is listening, a family or friends or community or your, your qari, whatever it may be, Remember that your sincerity could impact the one who's listening to the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us sincere, protect us and forgive us, seek forgiveness from Allah. He is the oft forgiving, the ever merciful. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and forgive us and make us a source of guidance for others. Our ummah is in need of many things today. Our ummah is in need of many things from us. And we are part of this ummah. We have responsibilities in this era that we were born in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us useful and beneficial and impactful on the world. Whether or not we see it and other people see it, all that matters is that it is sincere and we put in all of the efforts we could so we mention in this khutbah three things, three principles taken from Surah Muhammad of things that the ummah is in need of that we can do. Starting with what? Seeking guidance. And before that as well, the foundation. That you are giving victory to the religion of Allah and finding victory and help and assistance from Him as well as firmness. And then lastly, the reflections on the Qur'an, the connection to the Qur'an so that there are not shackles upon our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and make us from amongst those who benefit from the time that we were given in this world and make us a source of optimism and happiness for others and allow us to experience the optimism and happiness of the Day of Judgment. Allahumma ameen.